direct from Kansas City, it's Comic Book Late Night with Captain Logan! Featuring thoughts on comic news, Captain Logan's obscure character of the week, and a little something from the comic vault. Tonight's special guest host, Brown Coat Eric. Tonight, Captain Logan welcomes Cameron Cook. And now, here's your host, Captain Logan! Good evening, boys and girls. I'm Captain Logan, and welcome once again to Comic Book Late Night. I was looking at comics this week, and a new collection of recent Venom stories, uh, the, the Point One thing, and Venom Number One, and one or two other things, uh, came out. And it's called Venom Flashpoint Number One. And uh, I had to double check, because I was like, wait a minute, that's not Flashpoint, that's Fear Itself, right? N no, it's actually called Venom Flashpoint Number One. Uh, that's got to be a decision that was made before May, right? Uh, surely, <laughs> surely they wouldn't have called that Flashpoint knowing the giant uh, DC uh, crossover event going on right now. So uh, anyway, that cracked me up, and I'm, I'm assuming it's uh, called Flashpoint because it's a fun play on words because Flash Thompson is Venom now. Uh, but then I was like, I wonder what uh, I wonder what Flashpoint Venom would be like, right? Like you'd have to have some kind of really strange uh, arbitrary changes that were, you know, that were caused by uh, somebody going back in time and changing things, right? So, uh, so Flashpoint Venom would be like, my host is J. Jonah Jameson, and we just ate Eddie Brock, and a box of Twinkies. I don't know why a box of Twinkies, but it's Flashpoint, so there's just random crazy quirks. Hey, to mix things up a little bit, let's do some variant covers, shall we? Uh, here are some covers of books from the last two weeks, and uh, these, are, uh, these are some fun variant versions of them. Daredevil number one. Yes, I have a stick in front of my face. I'm blind, remember? Superman Batman number 86. Are you going to wear those blue jeans in the relaunch? You look ridiculous. Amazing Spider-Man number 665. Now that my spider sense is gone, there was no way to know these obviously flimsy letters would fall off. Batman Gotham Noir. Now, are we sure this thing is a noir, or is it more of a hard-boiled thing like all those Marvel minis? Star Wars Jedi The Dark Side number 3. And I would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for those meddling kids. And, uh, why not? Let's throw in Manos' Red Knight number one. You want to buy this comic book. That is, you want to buy it if you want to keep all your teeth. And now, a trivia question. Today's trivia question is, uh, what was the name of the Dark Horse imprint started by Frank Miller and John Byrne in 1994 uh, that then closed down four years later in 1998? What was the name of that imprint? If you think you know, leave your answer in the comments below, and I'll be sure to mention the first person who got it right in the next episode of Comic Book Late Night. Last week's question was, Joe Fixit was an alias uh, that was used for a short time by what major Marvel character? The correct answer to that was... Uh, the Grey Hulk. I would have accepted Hulk or Grey Hulk, and uh, the first person who got that right was Comics Kid 299. Well done to you. And now it's time for another exciting edition of Know Your Batmobiles. Here is a Batmobile. Is it from 1976, 1980, or 1982? And I'll be sure to come back at the end of the show and tell you what the year was for this week's Batmobile. And hey, I forgot to mention it, but uh, it's Casual Batman Day. That's right, it's Casual Batman Day. Uh, we're going to be talking about some Dark Knight stuff later. Uh, Dark Knight Rises, we're going to talk about the trailer and uh, some other things like that. And so it's Casual Batman Day. You can wear anything you want to, as long as it has Batman on it. Be sure to tell your friends. Uh, we've got a huge jam-packed show for you tonight. Lots of fun stuff we're doing. Uh, we're going to have Cameron Cook later on the program. Uh, Cameron Cook is doing a lot of uh, books for Blue Water Comics. He's doing a lot of the biography comics for the Fame series. And uh, he just did the Vincent Price comic that I reviewed a, a few weeks ago. Uh, he's, a, he's a good friend of ours. Uh, he's a great guy. We're going to talk to him. And uh, also I've got... Brown Coat Eric on the show. Uh, Eric's going to come in in the news section, and uh, we're going to talk about news and all kinds of other fun stuff. Um, right now, let's go ahead and do the Indie Spotlight. And tonight's Indie Spotlight is Manos' Red Knight number one. That's right, Justin Cristelli himself. Uh, I am not entirely positive, but I think I may have actually been the first person to purchase and, and read this. Um, I'm sure I'm the first out-of-town person who, uh, who purchased and read this, uh, so, that's, so that's a great honor. I got this just a couple days ago. Uh, this is brand new this week. Uh, this is Red Knight number one. Manos was nice enough to, uh, to sign my copy. He, he wrote Live Long and Prosper on it, knowing how big of a Star Trek fan I am, so that was really cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. Let's take a look at Red Knight number one. 
Red Knight is a fun indie superhero book about a kid who lives in a world full of superheroes, grows up, and gets lucky enough to get super strength and become what he's always dreamed of. But it's not as simple as it is in the comics, or at least in other comics. This version of the United States has laws about who can and can't be a superhero, and of course, Todd McLean, Red Knight, hasn't been authorized by the government. But he has this romantic urge to fight crime, and he does it anyway. Cristelli writes Todd as a man who never quite grew up, and I like that we see him as a boy at the beginning looking for Captain Danger with his girlfriend through a telescope, and then their first kiss as Captain Danger flies in the background. It's one of those perfect, defining moments in a person's life, and we really understand Todd's dream, and it's hard not to share it with him. He has the same hero worship for a popular superhero that a lot of kids reading comics have in real life. But Gristelli wants to capture the added impact of that same fantasy in a world where superpowers and superheroes are real. What would a kid be like who dreamed of superpowers and getting them was actually a real possibility? Well, in Red Knight, as I said, he grows up and gets them and jumps in with both feet, overly concerned with the feel and excitement of being a superhero, like when he and his partners fireball and nonstop are on a roof with no one around, but he insists they call him by his superhero name. It's ironic, then, that while the real world here really does have actual superheroes and actual supervillains, Red Knight doesn't exactly live in the real world, treating his life more like a comic book than anything. He sees things as very black and white, as far as I can tell. The bad guys have to lose because they're bad guys, and the good guys always prevail because they're good guys. Thus the tagline of the comic, the last optimistic man in a cynical world. A criminal named Brick plans to sell drugs that can give people superpowers, which Fireball has figured out, and Red Knight just says, he sounds like a great arch enemy. Let's do it. Sometimes he reminds me a little of the Tick, at least in how he lives in this giddy fantasy world in his head that's not quite reality. Then when they brashly break in and go after Brick, tons of thrilling action ensues around Cristelli's hometown of Norfolk, Virginia. J.C. Grande's art is a little sketchy for my taste, but I do think the action panels are quite good, and I love how the fight against Brick's gang is choreographed. Lots of panels, lots of angles, and it reads like a movie storyboard. And the scene of Todd kissing his girlfriend is very touching. The issue ends right in the middle of a bigger, larger fight that I won't give away. A pretty satisfying cliffhanger. It'll be interesting to see what kind of trouble Todd's careless attitude about crime fighting gets him into, and how well he can maintain his optimism while the rest of the world is against him. And tonight, joining me to uh, do the news is Brown Coat Eric. Hello. <laughs> uh, Eric, we've got tons and tons of stuff to cover, so let's jump right into it. The first thing is, there's a darkness movie happening. Why? <laughs> it's what? Like, oh, okay. No, what? It's not, not that the darkness doesn't deserve a movie or whatever, but doesn't it make more sense to make a Witchblade movie first? Well, I think so, it's too. That's a good point. I'm kind of surprised that hasn't happened. I mean, she got a TV show. Yeah, that's true. I never watched that. Years ago. Well, I didn't either, but... Next item is uh, that uh, we know now for sure that Superman and, Lo and Lois are no longer going to be married in the reboot. We kind of knew that was going to happen, but they've now finally come out and confirmed that. Um, among lots of other stuff, including uh, with, with uh, what Morrison's doing, uh, Superman is going to be uh, kind of different. They're changing his backstory up. Uh, yeah, Morrison's killing his parents. Yeah, they're killing his parents early, early on, and uh, they're, they're changing his power set a little bit. Uh, they're making him a lot weaker. He can't fly in space now, apparently. I remember hearing some of the, or that there's going to be alterations that they're doing that are because of the lawsuit. Oh, um, is that what it is? That's what I heard, is that they have to change things, because after a lawsuit, if they lose, they'll be able to keep using Superman, but they can't use certain elements. Um, and that's why they're... Cause why, I, I, from what I understand, they can't use anything in Action Comics number one, which means uh, uh, I, the Kents are in issue one, but Krypton isn't. It just says he comes from a planet, which would explain why they're like, oh, we're going to be much more Kryptonian, I think. Yeah. I don't know this be mostly Grant Morrison, but from what I heard, they have to alter things for the inevitable losing the lawsuit. Yeah, but that makes a lot of sense, uh, especially since um, they're not doing all these changes with Batman. Because that was, and, and, uh, and we now know why he's wearing uh, uh, pants because he wears pants, and then he wears armor. Yeah, and the armor thing is strange. But anyway, we'll we'll, we'll see we'll see how that goes. I just think that it's kind of odd that they're all uh, you know the emphasis is now going to be on Cal Kal more than Clark Kent, but then with reducing his yeah, power that, that set. Yeah, that's weird too because I much prefer the reverse emphasis. 
Yeah, yeah, me too. I mean, Superman needs to be somewhat... Yeah, it, but it just seems like it, it's not mutually exclusive. It's like, well, we're going to make him more Kal-El than Clark Kent, but then at the same time, he's going to have a reduced power set so that he's easier to beat because that humanizes him. Uh, those things don't seem to mesh to me, so I don't know. I think it's kind of strange. Yeah, well, I, I'm, 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 in, I'm, I'm still... I'm reading uh, Action Comics, so... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, me too. Are, are you reading Superman? I don't know. I may give the first issue a shot. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm right there too. I'm not a George Prince fan. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm not either. Uh, but but I'll but I'll definitely you know at least read the I first know. issue. The most interesting thing that I read in that is that we're getting new villains. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, but again, it just seems like the emphasis is on and they can beat Superman. <laughs> well, well, that was the one in Superman. But when they're talking about action comics, it, was, it might have been a separate interview with Grant Morrison. who's just like, yeah, we introduced. Uh, new characters and new villains. I'm like, well, that's kind of interesting. Oh, cool, yeah, because I didn't, I didn't read that part. Well, hey, let's move on. Uh, so, okay. Dark Knight Rises teaser. Eric, go. What do you think? All right. Before Dark Knight Rises teaser came out, my friend and I had a conversation, and I was like, isn't it interesting that Marvel is capable of putting out all of these commercials with these huge explosions, and like, I can see like a building blowing up in regards to the Dark Knight, and I, it has so much more emotional impact. And I kind of have the same thing here. Like, despite everything I've seen, Gordon in a hospital bed is so much more impactful to me than, like, anything I've seen in any trailer for anything else, because I know it means something. And obviously the current theory running around is he's the one that gets broken. Right, yeah. Um, by Bane. Yeah, um, I remember that. I, I mean, it's, it's short, but I like it. Um, there's a lot of No Man's Land going on here, where he's like, you know, Batman left. Fingers crossed. That's what I'm. That's what I'm hoping <laughs> is that there's a lot of no man's land here. Um, I honestly, Does I was. Has an earthquake machine. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I, I was. I was more excited, honestly, about the uh, about the poster <laughs> than I was even about the trailer. Um, my one complaint is in the trailer we get a close up of Bane, like a face shot, and he looks exactly like the Doctor from GI Joe: uh, The Rise of Cobra. <laughs> Now, now don't, get me, don't get me wrong, I love G.I. Joe the Rise of Cobra, but, but I kind of expect, like, a much better production value from Batman. I don't know, like, I didn't have a problem with, with that mask until I saw it head on, and I'm like, that is literally just a doctor from G.I. Joe. Yeah, but you, but you saw it for two seconds. I'm sure it's going to be integrated better into the film. I mean, this is not the first so. time we've seen something in with, with Nolan's Batman where we went, really, that's what they're doing? And then it worked fine in context? Yeah. I mean, like, the sheer amount of information we get from the Amazing Spider-Man trailer, which, by the way, just came up today and we'll talk about next, um, yeah. uh, is, is, of course, you know, we get a lot more information there. Uh, but the Dark Knight Rises trailer isn't about information. It seems to more be a lot about uh, this is going to be the end of it. It's a trilogy. We're capping off the trilogy. And I think what Nolan's doing, most importantly, is reminding everybody who aren't big comic book fans like us that there was a movie before Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah, which Dark Knight kind of ignored. Yeah, well, and I think a lot of people have ignored that. You know, I, I wanted to mention this real quick. My wife told me uh, that she talked to somebody at work today who has seen Dark Knight several times and likes it and did not know what Begins was. Yeah, my, 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 my girlfriend at the same time. And I wonder how I was, much I of that... like, there's this other Batman movie that's before the Joker one. She's like, what? And I'm like, yeah. This is the only time I can think of that this has ever happened. Where, well, maybe not ever. I mean, like... Like, maybe Terminator 2 kind of eclipsed the, the first one, but it had two in the title? I actually, I, I actually know people that, or I knew people that had seen Terminator 2 and not seen Terminator 1. I was I that way for, been aware of for a long time, too, but you have to be aware of it because it has two in the title. Yeah. Um, but yeah, well, yeah Dark Knight... Maybe you just took it that way. Dark Knight made too much money, and I think a lot of fans have a hard time getting their minds around the fact that there are people who don't know about Begins, but keep in mind how much more money Dark Knight, Dark Knight made than Begins, and that tells you how many people saw it versus how many people saw Begins. Um, well, and, and Dark Knight is such a standalone film that it, is. it almost doesn't even require people to go back and be like, all right, what happened before? Are, are, you, are you worried that that might hurt Rises a little bit? Not in attendance, but just in, in, in how people enjoy it? Like... Like, I'm wondering if there won't be people... The Shadows is as big as... Is, is as big involved in the plot as, it, as people have been assuming it's going to be. Uh -huh. It might hurt it, especially with, you know, talks of, like, Raza Google and stuff like that. Right. If they, don't, if they don't hold the audience's hand, which Nolan doesn't do, uh -huh. 
I think a lot of people might might be lost. Not that I care because they already paid for the ticket, so... Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I just have to mention that the, the chanting at the end of the trailer... Yeah, what um, is that, do you think? Originally was at this website called The Fire Rises, which was like a, you know, promotional website. Right. That's the coolest chanting ever. <laughs> it's like, ish, ish, macho, macho, ish, ish. And nobody knows what it says either. There's two theories. One is that it says... Uh, uh, rise, rise, he is risen. The other one says, yes, kill him, kill him. Are we assuming that that's League of Shadows? Yeah, it seems to be the... Well, it, we're assuming it's League of Shadows if it's kill him. Uh, if it's rises, it might not be, but uh, I'm not really sure. Well, let's go ahead and jump forward. Uh, first reactions to Amazing Spider-Man trailer. Well, it's not Lizard. I was promised Lizard in the trailer. I think it looks good. Uh, the rumors I heard that they're playing up Peter Parker's mom and dad are secret agents angle mm -hmm. seems to be completely founded in this trailer. It seems to be the point of the trailer in a lot of ways, especially when you get when you get to the very end of it and he says and he says you know, there are the secrets that we keep and the secrets that are kept from us. It's like it's like the big point of the movie seems to be that. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, um it's definitely a different angle. What I really like is looking at the trailer. It's the origin story, which I remember saying back when they announced it, I don't want the origin story. Right. It looks like they're telling it completely different. They are. Which and I'm okay with. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, I didn't want origin... Well, I, I still don't really want origin in a lot of ways, but you can prove me wrong. You know what I mean? It's like I always say, it, it, it can be done. It just needs to be done, you know, right. I, 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 I still wish they didn't do origin, but given that they are doing it, it looks like they're doing it completely different, and I like that. Um, I think it's really interesting that they're taking uh, from the spectac from the spectacular Spider-Man, making Gwen Stacy the like nerdy girl. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess in sequels, if they bring in like Mary Jane, like you can actually have a love triangle that doesn't feel forced like it did in the previous Spider-Man movies. Whenever they tried to do something like that, but I think it looks good. I th I thought the the POV Spider-Man web slinging was a great way. To have the same kind of shots as you, you as you get in the Raimi Spider Man, um, but different, or at least in the trailer. The first person the thing is working. Point of the original Spider Man was look, he's web swinging. Right. And I thought here it was almost tactile. In we're not going to show it the, the same way. We're going to show it a different way for the trailer. I was just impressed that the first person worked. Uh, it looked cool. But the but the other thing is, um, I think that they're really trying to emphasize this. This has a reason to be in 3D. Yeah, I didn't even think of I that. I think they, because they've been the director's been making a really big deal out of. I I, I read the uh, I read the Entertainment Weekly article on this, and he, he was making a really big deal, and and so was um, was Garfield um, about th this movie's in 3D, but but there's a reason it's in 3D, and we shot the whole thing that way, and we really want you to have an immersive experience, and I and I think that's probably a lot of why they they gave us that at the end. Um, I'd like to note that. A lot of people are, are talking, some, some complaining, some not, about how moody the trailer is. And it really strikes me as, because I try to look past trailers as much as possible, because, again, they're not about telling you what's in the movie, they're about selling you to go to it. I don't think this movie is going to be nearly as moody as that trailer. I don't know. I just um, don't. Because we, we don't get enough of hearing Garfield, like we don't hear like him quipping or anything like that. That's right. Um, although he does look great aside from the hair, like, as Peter Parker. He does, but they give us all um, these shots of him looking really brooding, and I wonder if they showed us all the brooding shots, you know what I mean? Because I know you keep talking yeah. about wanting a really a really uh, jokey Spider-Man, and I don't think that this trailer means we're not getting that. I wanted to emphasize that. Well, well, well the, the thing is, I didn't take it as moody. Like, like to me, it didn't look like, oh, emo spider -Man. I'm not saying he but is, I'm like saying the tone of the piece is. Darker in Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, like I, I remember hearing when they first said this that the script was darker, like Batman Begins. Uh -huh. And I can kind of see that it looks like it's going for a darker tone than what Sam Raimi was doing. Uh, let's jump over to uh, Avengers trailer. The flashes of light. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. Which people... It's not. Out, it's not a knock against the trailer itself. It's that it's leaked online. It's like a camera in a theater. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it looks like just a bunch of flashes and light. I've been told you can see the new Iron Man armor, but I can't catch it. 
I uh, don't like. First of all, let me mention I don't like talking about leaked trailers. Um, the, the the other two we've talked about have actually been released, and, and and you can see them. So I don't want to talk too terribly much about this, but people have asked me to mention it, so I so I thought I would. Uh, but yeah, it's leaked. You can you 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 can you can watch a really bad quality version of it. Um, I hate that. I wish it hadn't been leaked. I would have liked to have been surprised by that in the theater uh, because yeah. I didn't I didn't know we were going to get images of Avengers at the end of, of Captain America, and uh, I would have liked to have been surprised by that. So I'm a little sad, and, and I imagine the studio too is sad that that happened. My, uh, cause, cause you don't get anything about plot, we still don't know who the villain is or anything like that, you kind of just get the heroes running around, I'm hoping that when the, it's higher quality, I'll get to see uh, the new Iron Man armor, which he's got, uh, he's got back to the Circle Arc Reactor, which should bother me, but it doesn't, because it's literally that arbitrary in the comics. Right. He literally just like, this one, I'm going to have a triangle on it, this one, I'm going to have a circle. Um, but, uh, I'm hoping you get a better shot at Hawkeye in the not messy trailer. Right. Because he's clearly there, we just can't see him very well. The one thing I got from that that, that, I, that I thought you could see pretty clearly is uh, the modern Captain America costume, which just looks cool. You know, on the opposite side of that, I hate the fact that they gave Thor the ultimate costume. See, I couldn't get a, a glimpse of Thor, so I didn't see that part. But. See, see, that's why I didn't want to talk about this. I, I might be wrong, <laughs> but there's a shot where it looks like he has the ultimate costume. And again, like, you can't hear anything, but it sounds like Nick Fury said something like, you know, does that fit well or something like that? And I was like, you did such a good job of establishing the armor as being believable and working. And then to just kind of throw that away and be like, here's the ultimate costume, I was like, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. But I'll wait till I see it in theaters, really. That's, that's really the thing is, you have a trailer leak, but you can't hear what anyone's saying. And you're really just seeing some flashes of light. You're like, oh, that kind of looks like Iron Man. Ooh, that kind of looks like Cap. Um, anyway, the only other thing I wanted to mention is uh, Joker Vlog Series 2. Uh, there is a teaser trailer up. And uh, did you see it, Aaron? I did. Um, it didn't really give anything of the idea of what the plot's going to be this time. Well, except uh, it. It looks like they're going to try as like a, a bigger scale. Yeah, and it looks like they're actually going to do Harley Quinn, uh, which, is, which is hopefully going to yeah, be really well, cool. The, the thing about this was that this more than... Because you and I both talked about once Joker left the asylum, yeah. the, the series kind of got iffy because they didn't have the budget to do anything. That's right. This looks like they have a budget. It does. The the, the, the cinematography alone. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Hush show up because we had Thomas Elliott in the end of the last one. That's a good point. I didn't think about that. I think the problem is that Thomas Elliot is the guy that played the plays the Joker. So. I'm I'm oh yeah good call. Um, I'm wondering and and I, I just don't know this. I don't know if if um if this is known or not. But uh, the guy who plays the Joker, I forget his name right now. Um, he got to uh, he got to go to Warner Brothers and look at parts of the script for uh, Dark Knight Rises, uh, which is really cool. Is, and is this officially confirmed? Yes, this is officially confirmed on his website. And, oh, okay. and uh, yeah, um, he, he, uh, he on his, on his blog on the website he he talked about going there and about how cool the script is. And of course he doesn't get he doesn't say anything about it because he can't. Um, but what I'm wondering is if Warner Brothers isn't giving him a little bit of funding for the for the new season, um, and if that's That'd not part of. If, 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 if A he was getting a little bit of funding, and B if uh, if uh, then I, I, I'm almost positive at this point we're getting the DVD release of that as a I, I imagine Dark so. Knight Rises incentive. Yep. Yeah, it looks like there's um, going to be a, a, a lot of the uh, of the viral marketing for the new movie. And, what, and the other thing that lends itself to uh, to the, the, the idea that they have a bigger budget is that we got the trailer now, and it says it's not coming out until 2012. Like they're actually shooting stuff. Um, and I, I, I think it's awesome that it, it was just you know kind of I, I think like he was like a film student or something and just made the Joker vlogs. And now he gets to go to Warner Brothers and see the script of The Dark Knight Rises and yeah. get all of them to tell him how good of a job he did. Yeah, it's really cool. And, and all of this... This actually got me going back and re-watching through the Joker blog. Yeah, yeah, me too a little bit. And uh, and also, uh, if, you're, if you're a fan of that series and you haven't gone back and, and, and looked at it, uh, do watch the commentaries because they're really interesting and informative. And, yeah, the and commentaries are so much fun. The guys are funny and uh, they're really... Um, they, 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 know, they know what they're doing. Um, that's that's the, that's the cool thing. They just feel like professionals to me. It's really it's really cool. Yeah. Um, Eric, uh, that's it for this very long news segment. And uh, everybody, do be sure to uh, check out Duke and Manos's new show every week, where they'll probably talk about a lot of this stuff and many other things. And uh, okay, that's it for the news. Hey 
And my guest tonight is Cameron Cook, who writes a lot of uh, books for Blue Water. He's doing a lot of biography comics in the Fame series. He just recently did Vincent Price, which I reviewed a few weeks back. And uh, this week he re he uh, released a Tiger Woods comic. Uh, I did an interview with him at the uh, Distorted uh, Pop Culture Comics. Let's go take a listen. Okay, and I'm here once again at Pop Culture Comics in Overland Park, Kansas, with Cameron Cook. Cameron, how's it going, buddy? Good, man. How are you? I'm good. Cameron uh, does a lot of stuff for Blue Water. Uh, he does a lot of these... Um, biography comics. Vince Price just came out a couple weeks ago. Uh, I reviewed it on my comic review show. And um, other things Cameron's got. Tons and tons of, uh, tons. of these fame books. That's right. Uh, Tiger Woods just out. came out. Yep. That one is right here. And then you recently did a Glee one. Yes. And that one's thicker than some of the others. This is actually a, uh, they call it a graphic novel version <laughs> of it. <laughs> Do they really? Even though it's... It's still flimsy. It's still pretty flimsy. But it, it's a little, I think it's 40 pages as opposed to the standard 22 pages. Or 32 um, with the ads. Before we jump right into the comic grill, uh, let's talk a little bit about how you uh, put together the biography comics and what is the uh, kind of general process for doing those and what's the difference between doing those and more of a fictional book? <laughs> uh, a lot of research. You know, there's Most of the time I spend is outlines, then research, then write. So the process can take a month to two months depending on the character or depending on the person. Uh, Howard Stern took a little bit longer than most just because he's got so much going on and has had so much going on. Other people, like if I were to write a Justin Bieber comic, which I haven't and never will, <laughs> uh, probably would have taken me five minutes because there's only so much about his life. Yeah, but he's young. He's very young. But it's something, especially like the Vincent Price, that one I took time on because I got to write his life as if he was telling it to people. Yeah, now what was that like? Like, why is he writing it in the guise of Vincent Price? I suggested that to the editor and publisher, Darren, and he said, that's fine because they have the rights to the Vincent Price Presents comic book, and they have the rights to his likeness from his family. So uh, getting to write as Vincent Price was just an absolute blast. It's my favorite that I've written of the bio comics. Uh, it's my favorite of them as well. Yeah. I really I really enjoyed it, and I thought the art was actually quite good. It was, yes. Uh, and that is, who is that? Someone I've never met who probably lives in a different country. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Kenneth uh, Aaron. Um, okay, let's jump right into the comic grill, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Here we go. Question number one. Okay. My trusty question answering device. Uh, okay. Are there any celebrities that you're hoping Blue Water eventually decides to do uh, that you um, that you'd love to write for, for for fame? I know you're doing one for um, Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien. Right? That was one that I really wanted to do. Uh, I lost out on George Carlin, oh. which I really really wanted to do. Yeah, I bet. Uh, there's a few that I've wanted to do that I haven't gotten. Uh, George Carlin was a big one. There's a few of the comics that they're doing now with, like, um, Lucille Ball's coming out, people like that. Uh, I'm doing a David Letterman, which oh, is cool. awesome. awesome. I'll never, ever, ever do a Jay Leno. <laughs> Obviously, I did the Conan O'Brien. I would never do a Jay Leno comic. Uh, I missed out on the Ryan Reynolds, and I've been trying to get them to let me do a Chris Evans. So maybe if that would be Captain perfect. America does really well, maybe I can do Chris Evans. Uh, do you, um, what do you, what do you know, um, this is off topic, mm -hmm. but, um, uh, what do you, what do you know about the, uh, Adam West comic that they're doing? Nothing. Oh, okay. Except I hate that I'm not writing it. Yeah. And it's, I hate that I'm not talking to Adam West every week. It's pretty cool. Is it? And, yeah. yeah. I, I read the free comic day thing and it looks I didn't awesome. get the free comic day thing. Oh, you didn't? I've been oh. hounding my publisher for a copy of it. Yeah, um, I don't months. think, I don't think, uh, we had it here, no. but, um, a friend of mine found it in another store and gave it to me and I was like, oh. This is cool. Another store. So, yeah, yeah. There's well, another, in a different... There's another comic book store? In a different city. Okay. See, okay. not even in this city, in not a different, different city. city. Okay, no, no, you're right. Pop Culture Comics is the only comic store. The in the, only. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> but, uh, but it's... But, the only one you should go to. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's awesome. Uh, okay, uh, number two. Does Blue Water have any plans to do digital comics? And uh, if, in, uh, if they do or if they don't, uh, do you hope that they will? <sighs> that is a loaded question. It is a loaded question, isn't um, it? I know they've done some. I know that the Royals, which I also wrote... That's a nice quick plug, right? Yep, well done. Uh, that one came out digitally. Let's see if we can get everything in the stack at some should, point. I'm going to try to. Okay, cool. That one came out <laughs> digitally right, I think, the Wednesday that it came out. So it was day and date. Um, I don't remember who did it, but I know that I'm also on Comixology. There's a few of my comics on there. Uh, that is one of them. The Taylor awesome. Swift, which we don't have any copies of here, it looks like, uh, was one. There's one back there somewhere. And there's another one of mine, which was actually pretty 
interesting to find myself on Comixology. I didn't think I would ever do that. Yeah, that's awesome. Only three of my books, but, you know, whatever. Other quick plug, Pop Culture Comics now is on <laughs> Comixology. You can get things through us on Comixology. Or the website. Or the website, popculturecomics.com. Pop All right. Uh, beyond that, I am... I'm a standard fanboy. Yeah. I like the floppies. I like the, the feel of this. Yeah. Um, I've never bought anything digitally on Comic World. I bought, you know, digital CDs and stuff like that, MP3 stuff. But never have I thought, I'm going to buy a digital comic. Just, it was weird. Music's not something you have to hold. Right, yeah. The thing. Yeah, exactly. But comics, reading a comic book, and I've read comic books online through yeah. those, like, MTV previews or News yeah. Hour previews, and I hate it. Yeah. It's like, it's nice to get a little taste, but I'm not going to continue reading every single comic I want that way. Number three, uh, are you wanting to do any superhero comics at all? Absolutely. I know, I know, uh, you're, I know you've got some fantasy stuff coming out. I do. Uh, the Myth Adventures of the Muses comes out in two Wednesdays. Do you like how I got that plug in there? I did. Yeah. The 27th. July 27th, everybody. And I'll be doing a signing at Pop Culture Comics on me. July 30th. Yeah, that was a blast because I got to finally... And I bet you're excited to get to do fictional stuff. And a lot of the stuff now that I'm writing is fictional. So I'm still Great. doing a lot of the nonfiction, but fiction is where I want to be. Uh, I have... Which should also probably mission uh, Violet Rose. Violet Rose, yes. That was the first thing I ever wrote for Blue Water, and it came out... It was the third comic that ever had come out. A later after <laughs> yeah, some other it stuff. It was two and a half years later. <clears throat> uh, but as for superhero books, yeah, I mean, I would die to write X-Men or Batman or Wolverine or Spider-Man. Um, you know, everybody has their own stories of, hey, I would write Batman this way. Right. And I think, oh, it's the best story ever. But until you do it, you can't really tell that you're the best at it ever. And writing a superhero comic is actually a lot more difficult than people think it is. Oh, yeah, well, especially because there's so much of it. Yeah. And making it look different than everything else out there has got to be the tough, one of the tough parts. Yeah. yeah, and making the editors happy would be a lot different than if it was my own character and making myself happy. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of those that I'm working on that hopefully will come out within the next year. And as I hear from a lot of creators, uh, you know, you get you get onto to doing something mainstream like Batman or, 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 or Spider-Man or, or anybody like that, and there's only certain characters that will let you use because they have them the right. other places and stuff like that. They so. have them budgeted. I, I was actually reading an article about war crimes from the Batman series <clears throat> probably in like 2005. Yeah, I think that's when about spoiler when spoiler died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the writer of Batgirl at the time said, I was really excited to write Batgirl, I was really excited to write Stephanie Brown as Batgirl, and then they told me she had to die three months later. So. Yeah. And that would, I mean, that would, that would piss me off if I was the writer, <laughs> truthfully. Question number four, uh, this is uh, outside of your own stuff now, uh, what is, <laughs> he, he just, he just took, gonna he leave. Just put on his reading hat. <laughs> uh, what, what is the um, best ongoing you're reading right now that you'd recommend to people? Most, I know you realize how If I so. say this out loud, most most times I always fear that my favorite comics will get canceled. Oh, uh, oh, Northlanders okay. just got canceled. Yeah, I did. Uh, Unknown Soldier got canceled. <laughs> it's so depressing. Um, you could write it. You could like write it on a piece of paper and then show it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah maybe that won't count. Um, <laughs> best ongoing, I love X Factor. Yeah. I love Peter David. Yeah. Without a doubt. Um, I need to be reading. You I should be Peter reading. David. It's one of those things where I just don't know the characters, so I never looked at it. And people I, I like, it doesn't single. matter. It's Peter exactly. David. Exactly. Yeah. I have all the single issues, and I have all the trades also, <sighs> just because I can't stop reading that book. Yeah. Um, like a lot of image stuff, I read Invincible all the time. Yeah. I have all the single issues of that from one on, and most of the hardcovers now. Um, really love Rassel. That's a book nobody ever talks about. Jeff yeah, Smith's I Rassel. Yeah. I don't even know what that is. Yeah. The creator of Bone, which is right over there. He. Uh, it's a weird quarterly, com it comes out quarterly, so it doesn't come out all the time, mm -hmm. but it's technically an ongoing, and when it comes out, it's just, it's the only comic I will read two to three times the second I buy it. Wow. Yeah. And there's cool. more, but I always forget, because I get put on the spot. And, and you don't want them to get canceled. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Wolverine, that'll never get canceled. <laughs> Well, and even if they do, they'll just make a bunch of mini series, <laughs> exactly. right? Okay, uh, last question. Uh, what is the most obscure Marvel character you can think of off the top of your head right now? Go. Top of my head. Um, see, that's that's on the spot. <laughs> um, that's what the comic girl is. It's on the spot it questions. Is. Oh my god, I'm blanking. Uh, I gotta do more of these in person more do. often. It's, it's tough because I think when we talked on the phone, I had one, and now I don't. Um, uh, Dr. Bong. <laughs> Dr. Bong. <laughs> Who was that? Dr. Bong actually was recently... That's pretty obscure. In a, he was in a Deadpool comic. Really? Fighting Deadpool and the Secret Avengers. So it's not completely obscure. Sure. But, I mean, you've got Wood God, 
We've got Aquarian. Wood God is hilarious. And if anybody doesn't know who Wood God is, find him and laugh. Uh, all those old 40s characters like the, the original Angel, those are pretty cool characters too. But I think Dr. Bong, that's, that's the first one popped in my head and I don't know why today. So the Event Surprise comic is out right now. Uh, Tiger Woods just came out. Mm -hmm. And um, what else do you have that you're working on right now that you can talk about? I can talk about... Nothing. I don't think I can talk about anything. Uh, I've got some fiction stuff coming out. Did soon. you tell me that you're doing some more Violet Rose? I want. I've, I've pushed for a sequel. Oh, okay. And there's okay. talk of doing a sequel. Or, I didn't know if that was something we could talk about or not. Well, right? I've been talking about it, oh, whether I, see. I can okay. or not. Sure. <laughs> uh, there's a book that's similar to Violet Rose that's going to be more of a teenage book. And let's mention what that is real quick because yes. it's cool. It's, yes. it's, it's kind of this kids' book, um, but but I mean, it's yeah, I liked it too. I yeah. mean, it's, it's it's a pretty good all ages. It's all kind ages, of book. but all ages in the sense that it doesn't talk down to the children. Yeah, which is what yeah, I like. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm kind of on a on a crusade right now to push good kids' comics. Mm -hmm. um, you like that, and so I so I like talking about Final Rose. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's um, it's about a uh, little girl who is a um, uh, kind She's of a detective. Detective. Yeah, yeah she, and she can talk she to can talk inanimate objects, objects. And yeah. they talk back to her, help her solve. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I've also got a sequel to Victoria's Secret Service. Which Kumar did <laughs> that I'm doing, and it's a four issue right that now. Sounds funny. It, yeah, it's a four issue right now, but it might get pushed into an ongoing, and I'm very, very, really hoping all of you will buy it so that I can. How did they not get sued for that? Uh, because it's VSS. Oh, course. I see. Okay. We just call it Victoria's Secret <laughs> Service, and it's Queen Victoria's Secret oh, okay, Service. Okay, 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 cool. Uh, and a few other fiction it's titles. It's a play on where it's yeah. like it's like Bed Bath and Batman Beyond. <laughs> exactly. That's not mine. No. Uh, beyond that, I've got a lot of fiction and. Nonfiction, and then some of my own creations that I'm hoping to have out by the end of the year. Cool, so awesome. And and uh, we got any creator-owned stuff that you're hoping to eventually get pushed somewhere? Mm -hmm. um, I'm pushing towards everybody. Uh, <laughs> honestly, I'm just trying to get somebody to say they want to publish it. Um, I've pushed towards Two One Five Inc., who just recently did Vic, Vic Boone, and they do Jesus Hates Zombies. They do a lot of books like that, but actually, really cool guys. They're from or Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, but I can't remember if it's Pittsburgh or Philadelphia. Uh, but I'm pushing my superhero book, Dana Mora, which is actually about a, I call it Superman Meets the Green Mile. So if you're interested in that, let me know. <laughs> That's really interesting yes, sounding. Yes, We'll talk more about that later. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, off the record. Yeah. Well, Cameron, uh, thanks a lot for being on the show. Thank you. Uh, fantastic. Cameron's going places. Uh, everybody uh, check out Cameron's stuff at Blue Water, and uh, keep your eye out for um, uh, Myth Adventures of the Muses, uh, which looks really uh, wicked awesome, and also for uh, Conan O'Brien later in the year. And uh, now, back to the show. Today's Obscure Character of the Week is brought to you by Giant Pennies. Anyone else find it ironic that a billionaire has a huge copy of the smallest denomination of currency in his bat cave? Have you ever heard of Dr. Strange? No, not that Dr. Strange. Dr. Carl Strange. Eric, tell us a little bit about Dr. Carl Strange. Uh, Dr. Carl Strange appeared in Ghost of Suspense number 41 uh, two months before the more well-known Dr. Strange. Uh, the Ghost of Suspense 41 was his one and only appearance. No, this issue is, was actually drawn by uh, Jack Kirby. Dr. Carl Strange is, is, is in prison, and he claims to be the master of evil. And... Uh, find out that he's a scientist and a bunch of paratroopers came into his lab and if you I know you don't have the comic but if you look at it he's got this screen and it's like 15 soldiers just parachuting to his lab um, and they, they arrest him he's in, and he's in prison which is where the, the story opens and he uh, he builds a device in prison he builds a device to control Iron Man to break him out right um, and then he goes back to, to, to his uh, evil lab, and he has a daughter who doesn't know he's an evil, bad scientist. Uh, which, by the way, he also has some sort of mental powers that he got by being struck by lightning. Iron Man's like, hey, he controlled me, I'm going to go, uh, like, yeah, I, I, Iron Man's picked. And so I, I, Iron Man goes to fight him, and he, he defeats uh, the Doctor Strange with his daughter's help because uh, he had Iron Man like a force field he couldn't get out of. Uh, and that's literally all there is to him. Looks kind of like that guy that's Doctor Strange's nemesis. 
and he is able to restart his entire suit on flashlight batteries. Yeah, well, well that, that's what uh, transistors run on. I mean, this is 1960s technology here. Anyway, if you have an idea for Obscure Character of the Week or something you'd like me to talk about on the show, a uh, comic you'd like me to review, anything like that, be sure to uh, send me a personal message on Geefolution, and I'd love to hear from you. We also have a P.O. Box. You can send us a package or a letter, anything like that. Uh, the P.O. Box is Geefolution, P.O. Box 14183, Lenox, Kansas, 66285. You can send me things to that P.O. Box, too. I will not receive them. <laughs> Now it's time to see what we pull this week from the ever-expanding comic book vault. Today on the Comic Book Vault, we're going to be taking a look at Batman number 500. Uh, there's actually a couple of variant covers, and I have both of them, unless there are uh, more that I don't know about. Uh, the uh, regular cover, and then the glossy, cool, fold-out cover. Actually, let me pull this out and show it to you, because it's awesome. I was a child, I believe, with the regular cover, because that's the only cover I had. Yeah, well, I, I did too. Like, like I, I'm a... I don't know. Maybe they made more of these. I don't know. But uh, but anyway, so like so like you open it up and it's got regular looking Batman and then it opens up into Azrael Batman. Uh, Eric, uh, what is uh, what is your favorite part about this issue? My, my favorite part is actually early on in rereading this, I just found it funny. Where uh, after, after Bane and Batman fight, Batman's like, it's no so use uh, sealing the doors. He's he's far too smart, smart to get caught now, and then it's just. Bane running out of the building. <laughs> yeah, that's right. right. Like, 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 that was like, he's so clever. He'll find a way out. It's just Bane running through crowds of people. I love how extremely melodramatic uh, John Paul Valley is. Yeah, me too. Like, uh, especially when he talks to Robin. Yeah, well, what I was going to say is the part where he's just freaking about how awesome he's freaking out about how, how awesome it is that it's raining. <laughs> he's like, <laughs> "Oh, good rain. It's better when there's rain." I really, I really dug that. And uh, I, 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 I feel like, looking back, knowing what the entire story was, I think John Paul Valley is supposed to be making fun of extreme Marvel characters. Oh, really? That's, a, that's interesting. And maybe Image a little bit. Yeah, well, that's kind of an extension. Because it's 94, just, or 93. Um, uh, the the Asbass armor mm -hmm. uh, is designed by Joe Quesada. Oh, I didn't know that. That's really interesting. Um, I like the uh, the Azrael armor because it's overdone and that's on purpose. Yeah, I, I, I like that too. I like this kind of so big and just... I, I actually... I, the mask reminds me of Black Panther because it doesn't have a mouth. And he's so over the top in this where he's... Yeah. Like, like, and reading it, I'm like, this is either really not dramatic, but this is making fun of 90s Marvel comics where he's just like, you don't understand... I fight fire with fire. I have to bring the dark. <laughs> That's the only light I need. And let's take the... <laughs> yeah, 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 because Robin goes, well, yeah, but light, light beats darkness. And he's like, well, darkness is the only light I need. Yeah, no, he's like, he's like, fire is all I need. And why don't you go out and yeah. fight him with a flashlight? Yeah. Um... Uh, and I really like that line that he makes. And by the way, part of why we picked this was because of um, of a Dark Knight Rises, and we thought, you know, it being Bane, it was kind of a neat tie-in. Um, I really like the line that he has uh, where he's like, "Let's keep the dark, but forget the night part." Yeah. With the whole, you know, the kid gloves are coming off, uh, and and all That's of that. Tacky to me. What's that? That's not tacky to me. Well, it, it is, but I. But again, it's it, it's Asriel. He's supposed to be that way. And, and is, is, it, is it just me, or there's that scene where like the cop walks in, he's talking to Bullock, and he looks exactly like John Tom Riley? I I didn't even I didn't even catch that. Uh, but but anyway, let's do a real quick uh, rundown of the plot. Basically, uh, it's just Jean Paul Valley finally makes his uh, crazy Azrael Batman suit and uh, goes off and uh, looks for Bane and plans on killing him. And then at the end of it, he ultimately decides not to. Uh, I really like um, Bullock's yeah, line at the. Not crazy enough, not to add a flame to his suit yet. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I, but he's got those. But he's got those crazy claws, and he's actually running around with the claws before he puts the the the, the, the new suit on. And at the end, uh, Bullock's got that uh, that really great line. Or at least I like it, uh, where where he says, "Well, the the kid gloves didn't uh, come completely off, but they're but the gloves are actually scarier on." Uh, I like that. That was great. Yeah. I, I, I actually really like Bullock in this. Yeah, he's great. There, he's got that thing where he's where he's uh, standing off watching uh, 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 Batman and uh, Bane fight, and he's like, "Oh, this is better than Rocky." Yeah. 
<laughs> it's, it's actually one of, if not my first, it's one of my first comic books. Really? Uh, yeah, I, I have vague memories of a random issue of Batman with Talia, which could have even been in the Batman Adventures book, I don't know. I don't have that book, and I just have vague memories of it. But the one of my first comic books I can remember reading is Batman 500. It's an interesting way to start, because my only exposure was the animated series. And I'm like, this Batman's got, like, blades for fingers, he's, like, <laughs> shooting knives out of his gauntlet. Yeah. And Bane's not a Mexican sumo wrestler. Like, this is cool. Um, and because and, and I'd gotten a, like, a box of comics from my uncle, uh, because he d- decided he didn't like DC. And so I got it most of Nightfall that way. Um, and I read Batman 500 first because it was shiny. <laughs> right. Um, not, not, not like uh, the Superman where Superman comes back and it's got the, the shiny cover and like the metal skull. That's pro- I think that's my first Superman comic. See, for you, it's just all about the shininess. You're, you're like it the tick. You're, the you're easily distracted by shiny objects. I was like, it's shiny. I, this one clearly comes before the other less shiny ones. Well, hey, now it's time to find out what the year was for this week's Batmobile. This week's Batmobile was from the year 1976. I guess 1923, but I was kidding. <laughs> well, hey, that's all the time we have for you tonight. I'd like to thank my special guest for being with me through nearly the whole show, uh, Brown Coat Eric. Brown Coat Eric, thanks for being my favorite disembodied voice out of nowhere. Awesome, thank you. And uh, thanks again uh, also to uh, Cameron Cook for uh, being on the program this week. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you're ever in the Kansas City area, be sure to check out Pop Culture Comics in Overland Park, Kansas. That's our official sponsor and my favorite place to get comic books. Uh, be sure to support your own local comic book store. And remember, you're not really uh, that big of a superhero until you get your head on a Pez dispenser. I'm Captain Logan, signing off.